Welcome back. It is time now for a look at your Sunday money. A decade of dominance by U.S. stocks raises a common question. Why bother investing outside the U.S.? Well, for answers to that question and more, we're going to turn to our money man, certified financial planner, Paul Fain. All right, Paul, let's talk bottom line. Yeah. U.S. stocks are outperforming foreign stocks right now, but there's a little bit more to the story. Yeah, absolutely, Leslie. If you, but you're right. If you look at the last 10 years or so since the Great Recession, U.S. stocks have generally, or on average, outperformed foreign stocks. But if you look at the top 50 performing companies around the world mm -hmm. over the last 10 years, every year, 80 to 90 percent of the time, it's a foreign company. So why is international stock investing still so important then? We kind of talked about it a little bit, alluded yeah, to it. Yeah, in addition to performance, right? Mm -hmm. Well, diversification, mm -hmm. and we hear that a lot, that yeah. when you assemble a diversified portfolio, you're putting together uh, assets that don't all do the same thing at the same time, so it can smooth out performance. A lot of foreign companies are paying attractive dividends, which we, where a company shares part of its earnings, profits with shareholders. Um, I'm not a big fan of speculating on currency trends, but the U.S. dollar weakens and strengthens against foreign mm -hmm. currencies. That adds another layer of diversification in your portfolio's performance. And then let's talk a minute about valuations. Just I know. Let's stock kind of prices. dive into that word a little bit because I'm not familiar. Yeah. So think of uh, just shopping. When you're shopping for something, are you paying full price? Or are you maybe paying overpriced like on mm -hmm. eBay? Or are you paying underpriced like on sale? So foreign stocks compared to U.S. stocks are slightly undervalued. In, in other words, saying it a different way, U.S. stocks are considered to be fully valued right now, so there's not a lot of room to run. Mm -hmm. Whereas with these foreign stocks that might be in some cases significantly underpriced, you're buying here, their values here, there's still room to run in, f in those foreign stock investments. Oh, interesting. Great perspective, Paul. Thank you. Let's go ahead and look at our facts market facts. Well, I think, you know, what helps contextualize foreign investing, Leslie, is thinking about companies that we all know and use. For example, one of the, the premier luxury brands is out of France called Caring that mm -hmm. has Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent. Um, the largest food company in the world is in Switzerland. We all know it and love it. It's Nestle's. Um, <laughs> AstraZeneca is a big uh, pharma company, drug company out of the UK. And of course, we know a South Korean company, Samsung, is one of the main yeah. competitors to our Apple smartphones. There's a lot of companies that are not here in the U.S. And until you break it down like that, sometimes you forget. Literally, there's a world of opportunity for, to investors. And we want to remind folks, half the world's stock values in the U.S., half the world's stock values are not in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So. There's going to be periods where U.S. stocks outperform. There's going to be periods where foreign stocks outperform. Include both in your investment strategy. A lot of options. And Paul, for people that want to send you questions for you to answer here on the show, where can they uh, send those? Yeah, anytime. Send them to me at paul at assetplanningcorp.com.